What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna highlight some of my favorite features contained inside of the extension profile builder. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Stick around to the end, cause I'm gonna show you one of my favorite new features, as well as a hidden function inside a profile builder that everyone should know about and most people don't. And so just a reminder that profile builder is currently on sale as a part of their Black Friday sale. You can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash profile builder. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning I do receive a commission if you purchase through that link. But um, what I wanted to do is talk through some of my favorite features inside of this tool. And so a lot of you have probably seen videos where people go through and they use profile builder in in order to quickly add profiles, right? So it's not like a secret that you can go through and you can add complex profiles inside of your model just by clicking like this. And that is pretty cool. One of the things I like about that is if I close this shape off, it's gonna automatically close it in here. Sorry, I'm kind of working through x-ray mode, but it is gonna kind of automatically close that profile off like this. But one of the things that I really like about this, and I'm actually kind of replacing the follow me tool with profile builder, is you can just select a path and use the follow me function or the build along path function in order to create this profile along all of these different edges like this. And so that can be a massive time saver because then all you have to do is pick up a path. And there's a tool I'm gonna to talk about later that is absolutely game changing that's going to make that even easier. Now, my second thing that I really like about this is you can really quickly replace profiles. So for example, I've got this piece of crown molding right here, but I wanna swap it out with this piece of crown molding right here, this crown four. Well, I don't have to go in and delete this out and then redraw it. What I can do instead is I can just select any profiles that are in the model, click on this button right here, select the option for edit attribute profile and click on apply. And notice what that did, I'm gonna undo it so you can watch it again. Notice what that does is that swaps out every instance of that profile that you have selected with this other profile. That is a massive time saver and one of the reasons that I love using this tool instead of the follow me tool. Now, let's say that inside of this space right here, we needed to adjust our wall. So say for whatever reason, I'm gonna delete out this lamp. Um, this is a 3D warehouse model. Uh, I'll put the uh, information for the model down in the lower right hand corner here, but say that you made an adjustment to this wall. And so we're just gonna draw a line. We're just gonna draw a line up to the roof in order to split this face. And so say that this wall needed to go out like this. Well, the problem with that is if we add a bump out to this wall, my profile is no longer following along the wall, right? Well, one of the features I really like about Profile Builder is there's actually an option in here to edit the path of the active profile member or assembly. Well, what that means is that means I can select this profile, click on the edit path function right here, and you need to double click into it first, but then you can click on it and you can adjust the path. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna split this line out like this right here, and then I'm gonna go into x-ray mode and I'm gonna erase out these edges. But now, if I click back out of here like this, notice how that profile now follows along with that revised path. So these are live in the sense that if you wanna make changes to them for whatever reason, so say I just wanted this to adjust, I could just select this profile and I could change the path like this. And it's gonna follow along with that path. So making changes in here, there's actually smarts to the changes so that you don't have to redo your work by having to redo the paths later on. Okay, so next up are some tools for interacting profiles together. So say that I've got a couple tools or a couple edges like these, and I wanna create this uh, this I-beam right here. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the build along path function in order to do that. Now we have a problem in here, and the problem is that these aren't oriented properly and they don't really turn this corner. And so instead of having to come in here and mess with a bunch of features and functions and things like that, which you can do. There's ways to adjust the joints, but there's also a function in here where if we select both of these and you click on the option for join selected profile members, what that's gonna do is that's gonna join these together into a singular profile member like this, which by itself is cool, but then if I was to click in here and let's say we wanted to add some additional whatever to this, some additional changes like this, notice what I can do 
is I can click back out of this and this has actually changed to follow along with this. And I actually made a mistake and made this run along the wrong path, but because this is adjustable, I can just make this change right here and it's gonna run in here properly. So that by itself is also cool. It's kind of an extension of the join function we had before. And so what's cool about this is there's also a trim function that you can use. So say I open this up and say that I wanna take a piece of floor deck and I'm gonna go ahead and center it right here, but I'm just going to apply it across the surface like this. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this object and trim it across the surface. But before I do that, I want more floor deck. So to do this, what I can do is I can select the object, double click in here, and then click on the edit the profile, and you can edit that profile, whoops, you can edit that profile in place. So I can take this profile and I can make a copy up like this. I can also make a copy down like this in order to extend that. And we're gonna go ahead and say yes right here, but notice how that made that wider. Well, this allows you to select the option for trim to face tool and you can pick the face. Or in this case, if you hold the shift key, you can pick two faces right here. And then notice how I can move my mouse down or up to pick a direction. So I want it to go down, I'm gonna click and so in this case, actually for this to work, this is gonna to need to be a solid. So we're just gonna take this whole thing. We're just gonna offset it just a tad so that it's actually a surface in here like this. So we're just gonna draw a face. And so then when it's a solid, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to interact this with the other object. So I'm just gonna draw this right here. We'll click out of it. We're gonna say yes. So now this is gonna be a solid shape, right? So what that allows me to do is that allows me to use this trim to face function where I can pick one, I can hold shift and I can click again to pick a second face. And notice how I can move my mouse in either direction, but I can click and it's gonna trim that object along these two faces right here. So you can use this to follow along different faces like this inside of SketchUp, which is really cool. And so in addition, I also do love this tool because of the handrails that it can create. I mean, obviously things like glass railings are really cool because you can just pick points and then just kind of extrude them along the path using profiles that have been created or assemblies that have been created in Profile Builder like this. Um, one function that I really like is you can create a railing like this one. You can pick a different railing. So say we like this one instead, and you can just swap it out. Same way you can the profiles, which is hugely time saving. And so one of the things I do like about this is some of these work pretty well along slopes. Not all of them, but for example, if I take this object, right, and I set it up like this, where it's gonna follow along the slope, notice what it's gonna do is I can use that in order to create a sloping rail that follows along with this right here. This one worked out pretty nicely. Now, obviously the detailing is gonna be important depending on what you want the rail to be, but um, some of these actually do work pretty well with the way that they create that. Like I like the way that this one works um, and being able to kind of swap between them and just test um, different railings to see what they're gonna do um, is definitely really helpful as well. So I'm um, definitely a fan of this from an assemblies standpoint like this. And like I said, some of these are gonna work differently than others. So this one, for example, probably isn't going to be as good, but most of them actually do work pretty well. So another feature I think a lot of people don't know about is the random rotation and scale. And so if I pick an assembly, right this, like this, we're gonna create a new assembly. All right, so say you add an assembly with just some plants in it, like this. So say I wanted to add plants all the way along this surface. Well, what you can do is notice how there's an option here for random rotation. And then you can also set a random scale function in here. So I'm gonna type in something like 0.75 all the way up to 1.25 like this. Well, notice how this is something I've already placed in here. But if I run this, right, and I need to set the randomization for all three objects. So this one also needs random. like this, but now if I select this object and I rerun it, notice how it's going to re-randomize those every single time. So you can use this in order to create a random assembly of plants or at least a randomly rotated and scale group of plants in your model. And then I can do the same thing over here and it's gonna apply a different random rotation and scale to that right there so that these aren't 100% 
uniform, which I think is a cool function. I would like to see a random spacing, which I don't think I've seen in here yet, but um, this is definitely valuable for things like, um, like plants and other things like that. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about a tool and profile builder that most people don't know is there, and it's the one I use the absolute most. It's this Smart Path Select Tool right here. And so what the Smart Path to Select Tool does is it automatically tries to select edges in a sequence. And so if you've ever dealt with something like this is from a flex tools video that I'm doing, but if you've ever dealt with like your curves getting uh, exploded or anything like that, it can be really painful trying to pick up just those edges so you can like weld them together, right? Well, what the path or what the smart path select tool does is it will allow you to pick a point so in this case, I'm gonna find a point right here. You can click and you can move your mouse and it's going to try to find the fastest way to wherever your mouse is. So you can use this in order to try to pick up edges along a path really quickly in sequence in a selection. So these, for example, I can select them with just two clicks, hit the enter key to finalize, and then if I wanted to like weld those edges together into a smooth curve, I could do that. And so another place where I used this a lot was when I was creating my spaghetti junction model for base camp, and I needed to pick up all the edges along a path um, along this really complex surface in order to add a highway to and so you can see how this actually got exploded into a ton of different segments and trying to pick it all up would have been very, very time consuming. What I was able to do instead is use the smart path select and I can just pick a point right here and I can just click and then I can move my mouse further and I can just pick up this whole thing and hit the enter key in order to finalize it. Well then when I decided that I wanted to add my highway dividers, I just had to pick up the profile, send my model. All I had to do was pick up a profile like this one and then just use the um, profile along path tool in order to quickly add that profile inside of my spaghetti junction model, just like this. So literally I use the smart path select tool in every single model that I use. It's my most used profile builder feature. All right, and then my last feature, which I think is actually my favorite feature in profile builder got added in profile builder four, and it's the split or extend profile members function. And so what this one does is it allows you to pick a profile and you can click on it. And so you could either trim it, right? So you could move your mouse over here and trim off the end of the profile, that's gonna remove everything else. And so say that you wanted to split a profile instead of trim it, you can do that with this tool as well. So you can pick this profile right here. And if you tap the control key, this is gonna go into split mode. And so when you go into split mode, what it's gonna do is it's gonna split this member wherever you click. So if I click in here again, so I'm gonna pick this right here, and we're gonna split this member like this, notice how you can use it to split this member wherever you want, and you've got kind of independent pieces of this. Well, that means that I could remove this or make it into something else if I wanted to do that really quickly. So this split and extend function is actually extremely valuable. All right, so those are some of my favorite uses of Profile Builder. So let me know about any cool features that you're using in your workflow or how you're using Profile Builder. I will link to Profile Builder on this page as well. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.